What is up, SRA? It's Dominic Duran here with another weekly track guide. This week's track is Spa Frankelchamp in the lovely Belgium. Now, Spa is a super popular track, but unlike Monza, there's more than half a turn. In fact, there is 20. So that's at least 20 general areas for you to make mistakes, but if you're looking at the glass half full, it's also 20 general areas for you to find lap time. If you improve your lines here at Spa, and you will with decent practice, you can find whole seconds of lap time relatively quickly without ever having to touch your setup. So without further ado, let's get on with the track guide. I'm here to show you show you some lines, show you some breaking points, and a few nuances about, tra about Spa that will help you go just that much faster than your competitors. So, on the way down to turn one. Keeping it on the left, we're looking for the 100 meter board for our brake marker, which is right here. Um, you're braking hard, you're keeping it down on the left side of the road because you want a late entry. Um, drop it to first, turn in, there's a dip right here on the apex. Now some cars can take it better than others. Some cars it forces the TC to cut engine power. Um, repetition will help you find out how much of this you can take, uh, but try to keep it as tight as possible. Um, now, late apex, get on the power, use all the road on the left, avoid the yellow sausage, avoid going over the yellow sausage. Uh, there's no grip on it and it can scrub a tenth off of your, off of your time going down to uh, going down the Kemmel Strait. Now, down, this is technically considered turn two, this random kink here, I don't know why, but it is, so that's cool. Hanging on, you can see we're, we're hanging out near the pit wall on the right uh, before we enter into Eau Rouge. We kind of start to drift here to the entry um, because the name of the game here for Eau Rouge and Radion is straight lining it as much as possible, right? So so you can see here we're already starting to make that attempt um, so let's see how much curb we can take since you are going so fast you can you have not most of your weight on the outside although it's not a huge turn so there's some left on the inside regardless you can take a lot of curb here um, I don't know if I would get on this paved area on the left um, before the grass really starts because uh, it's pretty bumpy and you want to keep the car pretty stable through over and Radion but you can use all the yellow and red stripe stuff on the left here. Now almost as soon as you exit the curb, let's slow it down here, um, you're gonna flick the car to the right. You keep your eyes locked on the apex here, it's a mid apex. Um, so keep your eyes locked on the curb, stable steering input. You don't want to exit too far wide out here because um, again keeping it smooth, straight lining it, limiting lateral load transfer. Um, now you aim to just touch this curb there's not that much grip on it, and it's prone to making your car oversteer a little bit. So I think it's car dependent and maybe setup dependent um, whether or not you can take this fully. But in general, I try to get as close as I can to it without actually touching it. Now, to Radion, straight lining this as much as possible. You want to keep tires over the white curbing, over the white line, just past the curbing. Um, you can gain a bunch of time here um, de going down the Kemmel straight if you straight line this and do this properly. Now I got pretty close, you can see um, if we zoom out here, yeah I might have I might have even violated this lap, that might be a little much, um, but regardless um, that's generally how much you want to cut it by, uh, cutting this is the name of the game here let the car's weight settle as you're going over this section. There's a lot of runoff space on the exit, so don't try to jostle the car and straighten it out here. Wait for it to settle on its own, and let it run out to the exit. Figure it out here. Don't figure it out mid-corner, because you will spin and you will hit this wall, guaranteed. Now, down the Kemmel straight. Not as long as Paul Ricard's back straight, but regardless, here we are waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We are looking for the next turn's brake marker for Lake Home on the left, and it's going to be uh, the beginning of the striped curb or the 100 meter board. They're so close, you could use either one. Um, you brake hard from sixth, bring it down a second, trail brake in. Uh, I'm not great at trail braking, obviously, uh, but regardless, trail brake in. 
try to use a decent amount of curb here. If you get too much, you're going to lose a bit of traction. I think TC might cut the engine power a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. And also keep in mind for this section of corners, you are not going to speed it up by using more throttle here. You need to keep your line tight and you need to keep your line consistent. And that is how you're going to make up lap time because it's all about setting up um, for the final turn in this complex here. Um, but regardless, you get off of the curb here, you give it a dash of throttle, right? Um, you turn in, and ideally you aim to put your tires on the inside of this red and white curb here. Um, you're coasting through the section. If you go any further than just the two tires on the inside of the curb, you are going to get tossed around by this curb significantly, and it's going to hurt your speed. So here I didn't quite go that far in. Um, I only got onto the curb, uh, but regardless, it works out. Um, looking to exit towards the middle of the road. Do not exit anywhere near this right side of the road because you're going to compromise your entry into the next corner. And like I mentioned earlier, the entry into this next corner, turn nine, is the key. Um, is the key here. So uh, you are on the throttle. You are going to get up to third. And as soon as you get to third, you lift off, and you uh, pretty you start to turn in. Maybe car and gearing dependent, but that's about a uh, similar timing. Uh, turn in and shifting. Um, leave it in third. I know the rotation is going to feel a little bit slower, but you are going to carry more speed through there because the engine's not going to be uh, going to be breaking you as much. Um, you can get on the throttle really early if you nail the entry here. Um, really, really early. So you can see I get on it right here um, well before the apex of the corner. Now you can take a decent amount of curb, I believe. Um, I wouldn't get on the green stuff too much because the green stuff does end and it ends in grass and you're going you're gonna to scrub a bit of the speed that you gain from that early throttle. Now, running it wide, being careful not to violate track limits here. Track limits in general are the red and yellow striped curbs, um, so just be mindful of that. This is an easy place to get a track cut if you're kind of out of control in that turn nine. Um, power down, shift up to fourth. We're looking for our next brake marker for, I don't know if you pronounce this cur turn Brussels or what, but it's turn 10, I believe. And our brake marker is the beginning of the of the striped curb here. Um, so as soon as you get to that, you brake hard down to second or first, uh, whichever whichever provides your car sufficient rotation. So you brake down to second or first. You're looking to hit that first apex. Um, you double apex this corner really, or you can hug it all the way around. But I like to double apex. Uh, the apex can be marked by the middle of the green curb here or the middle of the green next to the curb. Um, so you notice we hit that here, drift out a little bit wide, and then bring it in uh, for the apex, for the next apex, which is actually a little bit later around here, um, not necessarily this green curb. Note that you cannot go wide in this turn, otherwise you're going to understeer into oblivion, and it's really, really painful. Um, so yeah, you hit your double apex, and careful, patient on the throttle, because... You want to exit in the middle of the road. You don't want to run out here because A, there's no grip, and B, you're going to compromise your entry into no name, which is turn 11. So we are exiting here in the middle of the road, quickly getting it to the right. You can get on this curb if you feel like it. Um, a dash of the brake right about here. Um, there's no, unfortunately, there's no really great turn end point or, or even brake marker for this, but I would say very, very shortly after you shift up to third, and you can see I, I think I did it here, um, very shortly after you shift up to third, you are going to get on the brakes, just a dash, um, and slow your car up a little bit, and turn in, coast in, uh, mount the carb a little bit, but not too much, because again, it runs out into the grass. And you can get on throttle about right at the apex here, maybe even sooner if your turn in is good and your rotation is right. And you power out. Another easy place to get a track cut. You can see I almost got one here. Um, again, keep it inside the red and yellow stripe stuff. 
power down to Puhan. Very, very, very hard uh, turn to get correct to get uh, done correctly. Excuse me. Uh, but regardless, your breaking points are going to be these orange posts here on the right. I like to break dead center in between them. Um, if you want to be safer, you want a safer entry, break closer to this first one. But you can see I break about right here. Yep. And start to kind of drift into the corner. You, the, you want to save your front tires here. If you put in too much steering input or you take start taking weird angles through this corner, you're going to scrub the hell out of your tires and you're going to pay for it later in the race, assuming you're doing long stints. If you're doing 20-minute uh, public lobbies, then uh, more power to you. Take it however you want, but uh, I will leave it at that. Now we're going to double apex this one. So you brake hard, drop it down to third, and nail that apex. It's right in the middle. It's pretty intuitive. Um, don't want to run too wide here, uh, because turning back in, if you end up any further wide, um, is going to scrub your tires so we don't get extremely wide out uh, in this section of the turn and here comes the second apex again right in the middle of the of the curb pretty intuitive um, running out wide as, as wide as we can here I didn't quite do it there um, but the wider you run out the more you're going to save your tires um, even if it's by a little bit it's it's by a little bit every lap so it adds up so, on our way down to another great complex of curves, turns, I should say, campus. Um, so you should be in fifth by the time you get here. Um, your braking markers for this first portion of it are the overhead sign and the beginning of this yellow and white curb here. Yellow and red curb, excuse me. Um, when you hit them, you are going to break down and shift down to second not break down um, and you want to hug the inside as much as possible again if you rear out any wider you're going to experience massive understeer and compromise entry into the next turn um, you can lightly play with the throttle through this through this turn because you're in second the engine's going to be braking to keep your speed up you just want to dash the throttle a little bit as you can see here you want to exit in the middle of the road again we don't want to exit wide um, because we're going to compromise our entry into the next turn, leaving it in second, and notice I short shift here. I get off the throttle and short shift to third uh, to avoid engine braking. The The car will rotate enough. It's going to feel a little bit slower, but just trust it. It will rotate, and you can get on the throttle nice and early, right about, about here, um, and trust that the car will continue to rotate even as you're on throttle. Now this is another easy place to get a track cut, so be mindful of that. Keep it on the red and yellow stuff. On our way down to Stavla, our brake marker is going to be the beginning of the red and yellow curve here, again. Now, depending on what car you're in, you may be in third or fourth gear by the time you get to this point. Uh, but I think universally you are going to shift down to second. Um, and ideally trail brake in and try to get a, a decent amount of curb. Um, don't go that far under the green. I think a good gauge is uh, maybe the red and yellow because it's fairly narrow, and then um, the paved little section right here that you can see. That's about the maximum you want to take anything more, and you are going to either go onto the grass or TC is going to kick in, and you're going to lose some speed. And it is ideal to carry maximum speed through this turn set you up for a very, very, very long uh, portion where you keep the throttle pinned. Um, so about mid-apex, you get on the throttle. Again, if you feel uncomfortable, just trust that the car is going to rotate and run it out wide here. Uh, don't get fully on the green stuff because you will invalidate. Now, on to this next turn. Turn in is key here, absolutely key, because if you turn in too early, you are going to understeer on the exit and invalidate. If you turn in too late, you are going to miss the apex, understeer, and invalidate. So, there's no ideal turn in point. There's no great turn in point. Uh, you kind of just have to do it through repetition, in my opinion. But it's about 10 meters, maybe 15 meters before the end of the curb. Um, I think maybe if you 
really want to pick out a point, you could use the beginning of the green curb right here on the right side of the road. Uh, but that's an interesting spot to look uh, while you're driving. Or, uh, maybe your peripherals can handle it. So you turn in here, you keep it, the throttle pinned all the way through. Now, what's key here is you notice I don't fully mount the curb. There's about six inches of flat curb. That's the, that's the portion you want to be on. Some people like to mount the sloped portion of the curb. It does help your car get a little bit of rotation, but it also generates a little bit of wheel spin on the inside tires and you lose a little bit of power, scrub a little bit of speed, and you lose uh, maybe a tenth or so on your way down to Blanchemont because of this. So I only shoot for the flat section of curb here, and as you can see here, I pretty much, pretty much nailed it. So you run wide here, maximize the exit space, don't go further than the red and yellow, and power your way down. Turn 16, I don't know what its name is, actually, excuse me, this is turn 17 here, this apex that I slightly miss. Um, and positioning for Blanchemont, uh, you want to get on the green stuff, not all the way because it's going to cause an invalidation, but a decent amount. Um, the, again, there's no great turn in point, so you kind of just have to keep your eyes locked on the apex. This is flat. If you can't take this flat and your steering inputs aren't egregious, um, it is probably a setup issue, and I would recommend talking to someone in your local SRA community uh, for setup help because you can save a lot of time taking this flat, and universally, I believe this is, uh, this is taken flat. So, apex is in the middle again. You don't want to... It's kind of risky to get on the curb because you run the risk of touching the grass, um, but a lot of people do it, and it's actually not that sketchy. You're not going to lose any time, maybe a couple hundreds if you, if you miss it, uh, but, you know, do what you want with your life. Do whatever makes you happy. Continuing on, we run out wide, keep it in the red and yellow stuff. Um, on our way down to the bus stop chicane. Braking marker is going to be the 150 meter board right here on the left. Now we're going to brake hard and keep the car on the left side of the road and shift down to first gear. Um, ideally, you're carrying enough speed to where you still have to brake. And when I say brake, I mean trail brake into the turn. Clearly, I'm already coming off of the brake here. I'm fully off. Um, but regardless, you want to aim to use all of the curb minus the red sausage curb on the inside. This will won't murder you, but it will take off a lot of speed. So be mindful of that. Try to maximize your curb there and give it a dash of throttle on the exit. Try to try to get pointed out to the middle of the road here. Don't don't be pointed towards towards uh, the apex of the second half of the chicane right away because um, you're going to compromise your entry. But give it a dash of throttle here. No brake. Key is no brake. I see a lot of guys braking for this to try to help them turn in. You don't need it. Um, the camber of the road will help you do it, assuming your your car is further enough, far, far enough on the inside. Uh, so get it turned in, and well before well before you're pointed at the exit, you can get on throttle. Throttle will help you rotate here, as will the camber of the road. So you can see I'm already starting to get on throttle here. Um, TC will kick in a little bit, but that's okay. And you power down to the end. And that is a lap of Spa Franco Champ.